Welcome to the Potter Blog site. March 2nd, 2014. The official data, if you follow the math, points to a 33 minute delay between when the radiation alarm sounded at the WIP site and when they actually turned the HEPA filters on. Now we've done all the math here and we'll just quickly sum up the math and then we will get into the detail of it to uh, explain how that calculation came about and where it came from and why basically it's just following the math of what the authorities have released. The authorities have sworn up and down that uh, they are within EPA guidelines of uh, releasing less than 37 becquerels per cubic meter of plutonium. And if you look at this chart here, here's plutonium 39 going across, plutonium 38. Add up these two numbers, you'll see that they are less than 37 becquerels. The way we had to do this was, is we uh, calculated how long they had to leave the HEPA filter off before their radiation measurement would uh, drop it down to 37 becquerels. That result is 33 minutes. So what ended up happening is, in the first seven minutes of this plutonium release, 99% of the radioactive cloud was released. It totaled nearly 300 million becquerels. The total plutonium cloud was 660,000 cubic meters in size, assuming that uh, WIP was using all three fans to ventilate the facility. There was 489% more plutonium released than americium. So let's go into the detail of how we came to this. What drew our attention to this? And you know those who invest those who investigate a Watergate, they followed the money. Let me zoom in on just this just a little bit. They followed the money to investigate the break-in. We here at the Potter Blog site follow the math to investigate Whipgate, Hepagate, Lung Cancer Gate, whatever you want to call it. Likewise, we have a proven reliable source, inside source of the website, reminiscent of a Linda Sue Borman pseudonym. Look that name up, you'll figure it out. That inside source was able to provide us data days before WIP made it public, such as the fact that WIP had a detection in the millions of disintegrations per minute. But even with an inside source at the WIP facility, our math presumption is, and always has been, that the authorities are truthful and honest with their information and data that they've released about the plutonium disaster. However, we do follow the adage of trust but verify. In that regard, we compare the math which results from the data they have released to the reassuring narrative that they have fed to the public. So far, the official data we have used is based on information from a so-called engineering group funded by the DOE, which goes by the acronym CERMIC. Their data is from an air filter which was running days before and days after in what they describe the brief moments during which unhepa filtered plutonium and americium contaminated air was released from WIPS ventilation system. DOE has also described a quote automatic activation of the HEPA filters after the radiation after the radiation alarm sounded. Now since it is our policy to take the officials and their data at their word We've used a cost as an independent variable type strategy, CAIV, look it up, to calculate the size and density of the plutonium release using the brief moment 30 second HEPA filter automatic start time as the independent variable. That means we assume they were being truthful about this 30 second uh, release and we said we'll hold that steady and we'll change everything else around, the release data, uh, ratio out how much was released assuming that was truthful and that would give us how many becquerels per meter were released. Now we use that methodology because the radioactive density reported to the public by CERMIC assumed that the release happened over a seven day period 
instead of the brief moments they claimed. They were running the air filters from February 11th through February 18th, seven days. And they peanut buttered out the, uh, the release calculation, assuming that it happened over seven days. Well, we followed the math because their data didn't look right to us. Matter of fact, it wasn't even unitized as good engineering data should be. So that's why we were suspicious of it. We followed the math, and the story didn't quite square with what the public was told, i.e. that the release was less than reportable requirements from the EPA. EPA supposedly says, if you believe the authorities, that 37 becquerels per meter cubed for plutonium, once that level is breached, they have to report it. Well, when we assumed a 30-second release before HEPA filters were kicked on, the math showed levels thousands of times greater than the EPA reportable requirements for plutonium. So we've been reporting on that. So that's been very concerning to us, what's going on there, because the, what they told the public and what the data was saying didn't seem to match. So fast forward to Thursday, February the 27th. This is when our inside WIP source responded to a report we did concerning WIP's very significant efforts to stabilize, that's WIP's own words, the ventilation system. Our source provided us with some utterly shocking information, which forced us to abandon using the 30 second brief moments automatic HEPA filter ventilation switchover as the independent variable by which to do the calculations. So we just had to throw that out. It's clear to us that we have a much better chance of knowing the truth about what happened at WIP if we calculate how long it took for someone to switch the HEPA filters on, assuming that all the other information is truthful. In that regard, we're now using the reportable EPA plutonium limit of 37 becquerels per meter cubed as the independent variable. That EPA limit makes for a better independent variable because one might assume there's some sort of legal penalty for lying about exceeding it. So assuming all the other information provided by the authorities is truthful, we can calculate how long it took for someone to turn on the HEPA filters by holding the 37 becquerels per meter cubed as the number that must be met for all the other information to be true. Based on that math, the math says it took somebody at WIP around 33 minutes to switch on the HEPA filters after the radiation alarm initially sounded. Now we pray he, whoever he or she was, was upwind of that release the entire time when they switched that HEPA filter on. Because uh, that person may meet the same end which the human robots did at Chernobyl. The people downwind have a lot to be concerned about too, because either by deception or incompetence, the authorities are weaving a very tangled web in which the math of their claims undermines the veracity of their public statements. So be wise and be prepared to evacuate. So let's talk about this here for a second and let us actually show you the math. Well, first, let's show you the source here for this 37. This is uh, from a photo provided uh, by Zach Ponce of the uh, current Argus newspaper uh, down there in Carlsbad. Uh, this is an official document from the CERMAC people at New Mexico State University. It says the EPA and New Mexico Environmental Department have set an action limit of 37 becquerels per cubic meter for plutonium, plutonium detected. These are their past detections. Now notice the unit on here, becquerels per meter cubed. So these have been their past detections in becquerels per meter cubed. This was at an off-site location. Uh, we're going to look at data now from an on-site location. So let's go to the Excel chart here. Now what you're going to see here is across this line we have all the data for plutonium-239. Here all the data for plutonium-238. And here all the data from americium-241. Now previously what we had done was we had assumed it took 30 seconds for the uh, radiation release. Now we hold it at 33 minutes, sorry, 
Now we hold the uh, radiation detection assuming that it is below 37 becquerels per meter cubed because if the detection they report to the uh, EPA is above that then, it ha then it's a reportable limit. They said they were below 37 becquerels per meter cubed. The only way they can be below 37 becquerels per meter cubed given the amount of uh, radioactivity they reported in this sample which was smoothed out over seven days is if the HEPA filter wasn't switched on for 33 minutes. So uh, we assume the way this works is is the EPA says hey we want to know how much uh, radiation escaped uh, while the HEPA switch filters were off. And so they calculate it out and say oh based on uh, the 33 minutes and based on our detection in the air filters, only 36 something becquerels of uh, plutonium escaped. So that's the new thing. Prior to this, we had believed the voyage that it was only brief moments, and we had assumed that brief moment, moment only meant half a minute. So, we'll, so let's punch in here 0.5, half a minute. Now watch how these numbers change. So when you get up to, when you assume the release happened over 30 seconds, you can see the Becquerels per minute numbers for plutonium-239 jumps up to over 2,300, and the uh, Becquerels, uh, per, sorry, the Becquerels per cubic meter for plutonium-238 jump over 80. So we've got here almost 2,400 Becquerels per cubic meter, but the EPA says 37 Becquerels if you exceed that that has to be reported. They said they didn't exceed that. So the only way they didn't exceed that, we believe, is if the HEPA filters didn't switch on. So if we set the HEPA filters to switch on after 20 minutes, you can see we get uh, 58 becquerels plus two more becquerels, 60 becquerels. So 20 minutes isn't long enough. So let's switch it over to 30 minutes. And you go there and you see we have 38 Becquerels plus 1.3 Becquerels. So we're almost at 40 Becquerels. The magic number is 33 minutes. Then all of a sudden we're below the release required to be reported of 37 Becquerels per meter cubed. We're at 36.35 Becquerels per meter cubed total of plutonium. So, if you believe their e if you believe these people's the authorities numbers to be truthful, the only way they can be truthful that we can see and still be within the EPA requirements as we understand them and as they have stated is if the HEPA filters weren't switched on for 33 minutes. And what that means is assuming that uh they were using max ventilation, three fan, the system can put out 20,000 cubic meters per minute. You plug all that in and you get, a, you get that they basically released close to 300 million becquerels over a total of 660,000 cubic meters. But, here's the thing. it wasn't a smooth release of a steady 37 becquerels per cubic meter. They themselves have said the release has followed a logarithmic pattern. That's what you would expect from an explosive release. And when we did that math, what we discovered was is that 99% of the material ejected and the becquerels released occurred within seven minutes of the release. So people outside at this uh, testing station, which is not in the exhaust, but near the exhaust, within seven minutes they would have got a massive dose. That's why we pray whoever went out there and uh, switched those uh, HEPA filters on was uh, upwind the entire time. And we'll have some more follow on data tomorrow we'll actually show you how the uh, release progressed, what we think caused it, 
and the evidence that supports that. But what this says to us is, is what we've said before, is that the authorities are weaving a very tangled web with what they're saying versus what the numbers they release say. Follow the math. Be concerned and be prepared to evacuate because we believe this can happen again and potentially be much, much worse. The WIP people themselves have said that the ventilation system needs to be stabilized. They've built mock-ups, they've built the outside experts to bring in and work on it. These ventilation problems will lead, we believe, to a high risk of another hydrogen methane buildup and boom. And that release might be much larger. Just like the second boom at Fukushima, a few days, I think a week or so after the first initial tidal wave, was much worse than the initial release. Be prepared to evacuate at a moment's notice.